the driveway engineer i'm jr um today i am in lkq i don't know the exact name of this town it's south of grand rapids it might be wayland it might be door my weather came up as door right out of the gate there's an lm7 sitting here um i used to come here all the time when i worked in grand rapids i don't anymore look there's my truck in the future when it fails catastrophically and i have to sell it to lkq wah, wah, wah. Um, yeah, I used to come here all the time, but now I just really don't have reason to be over this way, so. But my other two Grand Rapids junkyards were, uh, closed. Notice they got the GMT 900 Suburban out here, pretty hard front-end collision. Somebody probably snatched that right away. But that would have been a definite Gen 4, 6L80, 6L90, depending on the year. Uh, another LM7. This yard's really flush with them. I got bored pretty rapidly looking at them. Those Ford vans can have pretty good axles in them sometimes. I believe that this is yet. I, that caught my eye. That's another LM7. The biohazard deal caught my eye. I wasn't sure what the deal was. I stayed the hell away from it. There's enough of that going around without me sticking my head where it doesn't belong. But yet another LM7 drive-by cable. Most of these are pretty well complete. Um, old six uh, lug and yet another LM7. 706. I eat six two heads on this one. Um, yeah, the, the yard was just absolutely flush with stuff. I, I don't know what the deal is. It doesn't get picked over as clean as the other yards I go to or if they're more easily able to cycle their inventory in and out. The u pole and Mason's been uh, kind of hit or miss for a while now. Somebody hacked that up for Lord knows what purpose. Somebody snatched that one. Unexplained fires are a matter for the corpse. Can you know? Uh, that was a should have been a Gen 4 also. This is another LM7. It's pulled already. I would totally take this thing. I know I tell you guys all the time to get complete ones, but this is out and laying there. I'd throw a breaker bar on it, pick that intake up that's laying two trucks down, and take it all out of there as an engine complete. But, of course, I have a little more experience. If you have a little more experience, you can win doing that. You can also pick it up, put it in the back of your truck, list it on Facebook for 500 bucks, and maybe some idiot will come buy it. This is a newer drive-by wire 5.3. First one I saw when I was looking. This is a, I thought it was a V10 truck, I, but it's not. I didn't realize that these 5.4s in the heavy-duty trucks had a cast intake. I thought they all had plastic intakes. It shows what I know, which isn't everything, believe it or not. I know that. I don't know why I was befuddled by the Dodge here for a while, but I was. There's a lot of Dodge vans out here, and for whatever reason, I don't typically see that. Premier Motorsports. That's the people that do my in-laws boat. They're in uh, Gun Lake. This kid came running up like a million miles an hour. I don't know what he, if he was racing me or what, but <laughs> it's all yours, buddy. Oh, there's a bedside toolbox on that truck. I think I was befuddled by this because I'm pretty sure that this man doesn't have six lug uh, wheels, but I could be wrong. I'm really bad at telling vans, and people will tell me, it's got the wrong headlights. Okay, I don't know. It's a crappy van to me. Yet another, I think this one was a 4.8. I can see what they are on the sides. They write the displacement on the sides. The Navigator used to be the hot engine swap for the SN95 guys. You could get an aluminum 32 valve. In the Navigator, you get a 5.4. The 5.4 is a taller deck than a 4.6. So it comes with all the problems at all tall deck motors. You know, it's hard to clear the hood. It's very, it's wider. It'll hit shock towers, stuff like that. But it will fit in an SN95 Mustang. Um, back when I was young and stupid and just, for whatever reason, thought that I had to somehow pay loyalty to a brand, 
here's another disc brake. It's for, they're always out here. It's just, you know, whether or not it's one you want to pull. And I'd imagine they're, they're going to start getting thin on the ground. When you look at these codes in the door, the axle code 45. So I don't know what they mean off the top of my head exactly. That other red one's IRS. Um, but I do know that when they have a limited slip, when they have the track lock in them, it'll have a letter. So it'll be like D46. I think 46 is a 373 code. So with a limited slip, it would be D46. And then you would know that that's when you want to pull. If you want 373s, if I'm even right. Here I'm looking at the different fans. Um, all these Tori, Tauruses, Taurines. I don't know. The 500 is also a Taurus. Ford, for some reason, oh, that's a Fusion. Ford, for some reason, had a, like two years of madness where they decided to call the Taurus the 500. And I guess that was supposed to be a throwback to like the Galaxy 500. Top down, chassis free. But yeah, uh, for two years, they decided to call the Taurus the 500. And then the, the Taurus was also a Ford Flex or something. I don't remember. It was weird. I'm trying to show you guys fans, though. That's the whole purpose of all this is that uh, you don't have to be stuck. You know, everybody says get a Taurus fan, get a Mark 7 fan, whatever. Don't be stuck on that shit. Just get any van and any fan you want. The disc brakes off of uh, those WJs, they're a different pattern. I was considering saying something about how you could adapt them, but it's probably more effort than it's worth because they're 5-on-5. Five five. They are 5-on-5 five five like a C10. See, there's dual fans. Those blades don't look hyper, hyper efficient, but I'm sure they're fine. I'm actually out here looking for a starter wire pigtail trigger. Um, so here's an example off track, an example of a fan. When you see a fan with blades like that, that's a big fan, S-curved blades. That thing moves tons of air. It'll work for you. Back to the topic at hand, though. This is a 3.5, I think. Um... On the Dodges, they went to a single wire trigger right around 99 or 2000. So I was trying to find a trigger wire. I don't have one for my D100. I was trying to find a trigger wire because, I, I mean, I can just jam a spade connector in there, and eventually I probably would have done that, but it would have been better to have the sealed up connector, obviously. So I thought I was just going to come out here, but I didn't realize how much they bury the starter wires on all these 4.7 vehicles, so like, the diffs right on top of them, the drive shafts right on top, the exhaust runs right next to them. This is a Wrangler with like no frame, so somebody probably could have fixed that, but I don't blame them for not fixing it. Why would you want to? I guess I could have fixed it, especially if it was down to like this much. It's kind of a bummer. I really like Jeeps. I was looking for a Jeep to OM six one seven swap. So this Durango here is my actual salvation. Lord knows why somebody cut this inner fender wall out, but it made it so that I was able to just reach right inside there. There's my starter trigger wire, a little white wire sticking off there. Um, yeah, I was able to just reach right in there and pull it out. So I wave the camera around. There it is. That's my guy that I needed. That's the whole point of all this. So now I can trigger the starter on my D100 and crank it over, and I could actually go start it now if I wanted to. I have everything I need to do that. I'll probably do that if we have a moment of nice weather. Batman was here, by the way. My battery was dying. I just wanted to show you guys that like Mary Kay doesn't pay what it used to and just some fun stuff that I saw while I was out there. There are a lot of Equinoxes out in the yard nowadays. This one has a, a V6. This is what I was looking for was Ecotex because I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know what I want to do with an Ecotech, but I kind of want an Ecotech to like put in a go kart or something. The 3.8, 3,800, whatever, they're stacked high always. This is an all legit LT1 with the home plate on it and everything. The hot ticket back in the day used to be to take that cover off and a hockey puck, a regulation size hockey puck actually fits in the hole for that. It's a Helmholtz re resonator, a silencer. Um, and you get more intake noise and everybody would do that. But yeah, I like B bodies. I, I never see one for a reasonable price. And then I find them in the junkyard and I'm like, how, how did you not find me? I could own you. You could 
you can rot in my yard instead of in the junkyard. But yeah, it, it is what it is. I don't really need another car anyway. Yeah, I was kind of uh, fixated on looking at 3800s now for some reason. This is a Chevy Spark, and I don't know which Ecotech this one is. I think it's a Spark or a Sonic or something. I don't know. I'm not good at what dumb little cars are, and I didn't bother to look at the... Oh, I did. It's a Saturn Astra, so I don't know anything. This is a Saturn Astra, so this might be the cool Ecotech. Um, these were actually decent-looking little hatchback cars. And then, you know, Saturn went away with the big recession, so... I almost bought one of those not long ago. 3,800, 3,800, they're just a dime a dozen. You, like, can't swing a... You can't hide a dead hooker's body in a junkyard without finding five 3,800s, it seems like. More Saturns, more SUVs. I've never walked this whole yard either. I come out here all the time and I always just stayed up front. But, you know, the yard has so much more to offer. I did not see any supercharged 3800s, although I saw quite a few Series 3s. I was looking here to see if this one was the SSSCIEIEIEIO. Um, but it's not. Or it doesn't say it is. I don't know how to identify it otherwise. A little Kia 4x4 over there that I neglected to really look at. It's a Sereno. The early Serenos were kind of uh, boss. They had like 456 gears and a Dana 44 and a center lock. They were real. They were a real 4x4. Um, kind of neat. There's quite a few Superus out here. I don't know what's up with that. Apparently they don't. I really. It's one of those deals. Subarus are one of those deals where everybody tells me they run forever, run forever, run forever. And then I see them stacked like cordwood in the junkyard. So, it really makes me doubt that. So I generally believe that if I look long enough and hard enough, the junkyard will always provide like it did with my. Uh, is a Volkswagen. I believe it's an Eco Diesel. I'm not enough of a Volkswagen guy to tell, but. Ironically, I think that this is an Eco Diesel. It is a 92 Jetta. It has a turbo diesel in it. I don't believe that there's any other turbo diesel available in 1992 in the Jetta. So that's a pretty rare car. Of course, rare doesn't mean desirable, which is probably why it's sitting there in the junkyard. But uh, yeah, if you guys know anything about the Volkswagen, let me know because I'm kind of curious. I'm interested in that kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. I had a Buick like this once. I had a GS, and uh, it was a ridiculous car with the torque steer and a supercharged 3.8 and no traction control. And it's kind of dumb, but uh, they always catch my eye when I see them. The yellow cap here would indicate that this is a flex fuel vehicle. But I wasn't sure if they had flex Hemis back in, I don't know, 07, 08, whenever this thing was new. So I wanted to take a look real quick. Um, spoiler alert, they didn't. It's just wah, wah, wah. the same thing you always get with a 4.7. Disappointment. Dun, dun, dun. Don't fall victim to disappointment. Drive a different car than a 4.7 today. I don't really know what qualifies the Liberty here as trail rated. Um, but it is. It's lovely. I don't even know why I was looking at that, but that's how it goes in the junkyard sometimes. I've always liked these Dodge Magnums. I think they're pretty neat. Um, I probably never have one, but you see how rough that one is. That's how most of them look nowadays around me. The uh, Wrangler, that, or the, not Wrangler, Durango that went to Europe came back all fat. They sent that out in the advertising. Maybe they didn't. Maybe that was the next generation. I don't know. I'm sure a Durango guy will be along and tell me that I'm wrong or right or whatever. Um, another Subaru here in a big heap. A lot of these Subarus are missing the engines, and I'm curious why. They must have some value to them, I would imagine. The little green bean here has got a biohazard sticker. I bet that works demolished if somebody had a bad day. Hopefully they are okay because that kind of thing, whenever I see it, I like to laugh and I don't think, take things very seriously. But, you know, when I see what could have been a fatality, it kind of bums me out. 
I always check the Volkswagens to see if they're TDIs. This one's just a stupid gas engine. Um, weed my way through here. My phone was dying by this point. The yard's not super well organized. Oh, here's Batman again. I got a kick out of that. And then I don't even know what's going on here. I looked that up. Apparently it was a vine like 10 years ago. Back when vines were a thing. So, before the Chinese took over with TikTok stealing all your data. Um, what else we got? These tires, I found all of them. Like Pokemon. They're scattered throughout the yard. They're Silverado wheels and they have Falcon Wild Peaks on them. Which are my favorite tires. Those ones are bald though. But somebody scattered them all around like a squirrel. Kind of funny. Sometimes... I really like the way the monster trucks look because I think they look so elegant and classy. And if I were to ever have a Ranger, I'd probably put that monster grill on it. Because I don't really care about grills. And it's not a Mazda. I don't care. Remember when the Hyundai Tiburon was a big deal and now they're all off the road? In a heat somewhere? It's weird, right? Somehow I landed myself back into uh, GM land. I like the classy gold trim on this Jimmy. This was for uh, a high class person, not not some low life. Mantana! Can you imagine? My goodness. I don't even know where to start. There's another flex vehicle, a uh, trailblazer. The yellow cap's always a good indicator. It doesn't mean that every every... Flex vehicle has the yellow cap, but there's, well, I suppose you can put any cap you want into on there. That one's a stupid 4200, the engine that could be, but never was. I know that a lot of people are really interested in 4200s, but they're just kind of a bummer. The Buick, that was a Buick Rainier. Uh, there's a Buick, there's a Saab. They're both pretty good candidates because they're, you know, higher end than the regular Trailblazer. For uh, a 5.3. And then all the 5.3s in those GMT 360s, they all have aluminum blocks. They didn't put it on your blocks in any of them. So, there are 3.4 liter Camaro. It's always a fun time. Another Ecotech here, probably. Another Trailblazer. The Trailblazers are really starting to fall off. If, you, if there's anything on them that you guys want, I would start looking now. Pretty much wraps us up for today, though. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the trip, and uh, we'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.